She looked into his eyes and screamed. He laughed. Louder, my dear, he said. Go ahead and shout. They can't hear you. Dr. Enright put his hand to his chin, looked out the window thoughtfully, and nodded. Very good, Mr. Wiley. Very convincing. And that's a clever twist at the end. Unexpected, but not implausible. You set a nice trap for your readers. Thank you, said Terry Wiley. Now then, Miss Clark, it's your turn. What do you have for us? Is it a criticism, a story, or what? A story, Dr. Enright. Have you got enough time to read it? I think so. It's not very long. Small packages, good things, eh? Very well. Let's hear it. Lisa Clark cleared her throat and began to read. When I was young, not yet in my teens, I would visit with my Aunt Jean and my cousin Rachel every year for a week or so in the summer. They lived in a small town out in the country, and this was quite an experience for a city girl like me. Though we only saw each other a few weeks every year when I would visit her and she would visit me, Rachel and I were good friends. As girls of that age will do, we shared all our confidences. We shared something else, too. Whenever Aunt Jean would go shopping, leaving us home alone, Rachel and I would play a game. One of us would post guard down by the front door to act as a lookout for Aunt Jean, while the other would go upstairs and read her love letters, that is, the letters she had received from her latest beau. That's a promising start, said Dr. Enright. Pardon me for interrupting, but you see how she has taken the utterly conventional what I did last summer story and stood it on its head? You've got my interest. Thank you, said Lisa Clark. Go on, please, said Dr. Enright. She kept these private communiques always in the same place, in the middle drawer of her bureau, under her nightgowns, in a wooden box. It was a music box. When you opened it, it played, Let Me Call You Sweetheart. The letters were folded and the paper was worn on the creases, evidence that we were not the only ones who'd read them over and over. For Rachel and I, they were our first introduction to love and passion and... First introduction might be overdoing it, said Dr. Enright, but go ahead. Our introduction to love and passion and we were more eager to pour through these letters than the most avid reader of romance fiction. We knew they had, you see, the added spice of being true, every purple word. Lovely, exclaimed Dr. Enright, go on. On this one day, it was Rachel's turn to guard the door, and my turn to do the reading. I was trembling with excitement for a number of reasons. We were doing something forbidden, there was the ever-present possibility that we might be caught at it, and finally Aunt Jean had a new beau, one who, judging by his previous efforts, was either more ardent or simply better at putting his feeling into words than any of her previous suitors. I entered her room, opened the drawer, and found the letters in the box under her nightgowns. Rachel had introduced me to this game, but I was the one who responded to it with a more lasting fervor. I think she felt guilty at revealing her mother's secrets. I didn't look at it that way. I only read the thrilling sentences, the unaffected outpouring of sentiment, and wondered as I beheld that eloquent wooing in masculine script if I would ever inspire a similar passion in any man. Really, Miss Clark, this is awfully good stuff, said Dr. Enright. You've created the scene and gotten the feelings just right. Well, it's true, said Lisa Clark. I mean, I'm not making this up. This really happened. You sneak, said Todd Herman, and the class laughed. Doesn't matter one way or the other, said Dr. Enright. Once you begin to put it down on paper, it ceases to be whatever it was and begins its own life on the page. Your only allegiance is to the story, not the facts. All right? And you're doing a fine job of it. Thank you, said Lisa Clark. It's such a, uh, I'm searching for the expression, said Dr. Enright, such a telling scene, evocative, pivotal, almost mythic, you know what I mean? Two young girls stealing a look at the ways of love, burning with that youthful curiosity. It's an excellent choice, I believe. Go ahead, 